how to deal with adult siblings that you have to live with for financial reasons. It's a, this, this person lives in a high cost area of the United States and her whole family's living together. And in this situation, they have some siblings who were easily triggered with never ending bitterness toward them. And any rebuttal seems to lead to their being mad or sulky or moody. It's just uncomfortable. This is the age old issue of you can't change people. You can only deal with you. And that is so frustrating because wouldn't we all like our circumstances to be changed? Wouldn't we all like to see some stress relief or uh, just some hope, it seems like. But yet, is there hope when your situations don't change? Can you have joy? Can you have peace? Can you live peaceably among all men when the people that you're around are not peaceable? And let me tell you, this is something that the Lord has deeply worked on me about in this past year. Um, I, I have children. <laughs> they are not always peaceable. And I look towards the end game of their life. And I think, you know, if they stay like this as, as adults, how's that going to work out? And, and then just dealing with people and life in general. And... And as a non-conflict oriented person, how do you survive that pressure and that hurt and that pain? So I, I do understand. I'm not just throwing this out as an easy fix because it's not easy. It is something so full of depth that it has to get to the core of who you are. So I just want you to understand that, that I'm not just saying this lightly, and I do believe it is 100% the biblical way to go. But it's, it, it takes, it's going to take a lot of prayer, and it's going to take a lot of personal growth, spiritually. First thing you need to do, because if you've been in high conflict situations for before, you've probably made mistakes. And they probably have things that they can throw at you because they're probably right. You have done stupid, foolish, prideful, bitter, malice, wrathful, gossip, railing, <laughs> evil speaking, all of the things that come in conflict, you've probably done them. So you want to get right before God and, and confess them all to him. But then as you're confessing to the Lord, write them down. And, you know, God says that before you go to worship him, if you have aught with your brother, you ought to go to your brother and confess it to them. So that's what I would recommend doing. And this is not a, let me tell you all of the things I did wrong, but the reason why I did them is because you're a jerk. <laughs> Don't do that. That's what I'm not, I'm not talking about that. You are getting right with God. You're not trying to resolve a situation with them. You're going to truly just have to be humble and, and express everything that you've done and apologize and leave it at that. Even if they don't even accept your apology, you need to get it right because God wants you to. The reason why I start with getting things right with God and then getting things right with men, even if they, even if they don't choose to apologize in any way and you never express what you feel like to them, is because of point three. But... Once you have resolved expressing that you've done wrong and asking forgiveness, give it a little bit of time to let that settle in and, and pray that their heart will soften. And then you're going to have to really work on keeping your mouth closed and not causing new problems because the second step is following the philosophy of you approach them and you're going to have a mutual goal. You say, you know what I'd really, really love if our relationship looked like this. And I feel like this is something we would both want. And see what they would like in your relationship and hear from them and say, I want to be peaceful. I want to be loving. What does that look like to you? And then as they describe what it looks like to them and you describe what it looks like to you, say, okay, well, I feel like the best way that would make that work is, and you can set some perimeters. If the person truly wants peace, they will find a way to have peace. If the person truly is hostile and not willing to give, it will become manifest in this conversation. 
but you have to pre-decide that you're not going to engage in hostility or um, that back and forth, that cycle that you've been through before. You've already confessed that and you're working on being gentle with all men. You're shooting for a mutual goal. If that doesn't work, then I would step back and I would pray some more and really work on being quiet and not engaging. And then you should try to come again maybe like a month later and say, I've been praying about this. And you just work on building that love bank. Esteem others better than yourself. If there has to come a point where they get their own way or you don't, then choose not to esteem others better than yourself. <clears throat> and, and that is so only something that God can help us to do because everything within you thinks they don't deserve it. It's not fair. Why am I, why am I always the one? Who has to give up? Why do I always have to surrender? Why is it that I have to sacrifice? It's not fair. It's not right. It's not just in your light. But I'm asking you to do, the, do this thing. And there's a reason why. So after you're working on this and you're doing it for the Lord, not, not for some manipulative reason, but to esteem others better than yourself, that is the biblical mindset. And then come again to them and say, you know, I've really been working on this and, and, I, and I value you as a person. You have to get to that point in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit and through prayer that you value the relationship. If you don't value the right relationship, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. But get to that part where you can find charity and love and self-sacrifice. And again, try to say that I really, you know, we talked about this before. And, and I'm just wondering, could we try again to, when we communicate, could we be gentle? Could I give you a chance to share your side and then I have a chance to share my side? And we work together to find a mutual agreement. And if that still doesn't go well, then this is the next step that I'm gonna have you take. Stop engaging in the game. Um, and the game, what the game usually is, is they accuse, and they might even be right, or they might be completely off base, or they may be projecting their own issues that you know they're guilty of onto you. And you just feel like, this is just blatant lies. This is them rewriting history. <laughs> There's no factual basis to this at all. But you need to recognize this is who they are. This is the choice they're making. And so the biblical example that I'm going to give here is Caiaphas and Jesus. And Jesus recognized who Caiaphas was. He was a liar and he was proud. He was manipulative and he had his own agenda. And Jesus knew who he was and Jesus knew that he was right with the Father. And so as they threw out all of these things and they had false accusers and they had false witnesses, Jesus said nothing because he didn't have to. He did not engage in the, in the accusation self-defense because Jesus was right with God Christ knew who they were that they were accusing him it didn't matter how many lies or misrepresentations of his words that they threw his way he knew what God thought of him Christ because he walked closely with the father in prayer you know he prayed and labored in the garden of Gethsemane before he went there he knew that he was submitted to the Lord he knew that he had no ought with him. And when he was reviled, if you look at 1 Peter 2, I think it's 1 Peter 3, I don't know. He, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. He calmly took it. And he turned the other cheek, Matthew 5. And, and it's so hard. And he prayed that God would forgive them. So instead of engaging in self-defense, he engaged in self-sacrifice. And that's what's hard because it's not just and it's not fair. This world, on this side of eternity, we don't always see just and fair, but what we do see is that we are called to obey the Father. And at the end of Matthew chapter 5, when it says that we love the unlovely, the unlovable, even the publicans like people that they get along with, it's the Christian who loves somebody who is, you know, Pray for them and bless them and love them who use you and abuse you despitefully and all, all those things. It's the Christian who forgives and chooses self-sacrifice. 
not martyrdom, not victimhood. Don't let it get up here. Oh, woe is me. I'm always the one who has to sacrifice. No, you are the one who has the opportunity to sacrifice. You are the one who has the opportunity to be perfect like God the Father, who sacrificed. He is everything. And he took all of that for us. And I just want to leave you. Oh, so, but also as much as life within you live peaceably among all men, you may need to limit your exposure to them. In the verse in Proverbs 14, it says, depart from the fool and thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. And then the other verse in Proverbs, it says, answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like unto them. Limit your exposure to them so that you're not constantly in this cycle. It's not that I'm like, just like, hey, go up and be a beating post. No, try to try to avoid those situations. But if you're there, you're on a beating post. You're just confident that let them say what they want to say. You're not going to revile again. And this reminds me of Richard Wormbrandt of Tortured for Christ. He had been beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten on his feet. All his feet bones were crushed. And and he said, to this, this communist guard said to him, I'm so glad there is no God so that I can do every evil thing in my heart. And Richard, he said, you know, and I only thought, I only felt pity for them. And I only had love to give to them. He said, not this, this is an exact quote. This is the idea. I had such pity for them to be lost in such darkness and such evil, such a void of knowing true love. I could only but pray that God would bless them, bless with them with understanding of his love and his forgiveness, his light, his goodness, his mercy. I was probably their best chance of seeing it. Christ in me, so I would return their abuse with love and compassion. They could not help their darkness. Some people are in rebellion. Some people are lost sheep. Some people aren't saved. But we are their chance of seeing Christ and that model of what he wants us to do.